Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Saeed Ali Mardan Admi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basics about multivariate functions or multivariable functions. And after knowing these basic terminologies, we will learn question number one to four from exercise 14.1 from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. Now, first of all, we will revise what is a single valued function from our basic calculus. If what is a single valued function? If a function depends only on one independent variable, then it is called a single valued function. Its mathematical form is y is equal to f of x. And I can explain this single valued function with the help of an example. If this is a circle whose radius is r, then the area of circle is pi r square. Here, pi is fixed. And the only variable thing is formula is R. It means area of a circle is depending on R, only one single parameter. So area of a circle is a single valued function. So after knowing about single valued function, now we can learn about multivariate or multivariable function. So what is a multivariable function? A function which depends on more than one independent variables is called a multivariate function. Its mathematical form can be represented as z is equal to f of x, y, means z is a variable which is equal to a function which depends on two variable, x and y. Now, I can explain the multivariate or multivariable function with the help of an example. This is a right cylinder whose base is a circle and having radius r and its height is h. Now, what is the formula of right circular cylinder? And it is pi r square into h, where pi is a fixed number, r is the radius of the base circle, and h is the height of the cylinder. What it means? Here, the volume of right circular cylinder depends on two parameters, r and h, or you can say the volume is depending on r and h. So the volume of a right circular cylinder is a function of two variables, r and h. So it is called multivariable function. And this is the most basic example in multivariable calculus. In multivariable calculus, when we discuss anything, any concept, we will have at least two variable as independent variable in our given function. Now, after knowing these basic things, we can move on exercise 14.1. In exercise 14.1, question number one to four, the statement is find the specific function's values. What we have to do, we have to calculate values of these functions in question number one, two, three, and four for these particular values. Here, you can see if a function is depending on two variables, then these two variables will collectively, will collectively form an ordered pair. So in question number one, the function is f of x, y is equal to x square plus x, y cube, and we have to calculate f of zero, zero, f of two, three, f of minus one, one, f of minus 3, minus 2. If we have to calculate value of a function at some specific ordered pair, then we will replace first variable in the ordered pair with first value in the given ordered pair, and we will replace the second value, which is y here, with the second value. And similarly, we will make the same replacement on the right-hand side. So let's see. First part, in first part, we have to calculate f of 0, 0. So in this function, we have replaced x with 0 and y with 0. So on the right-hand side, I have 0 square plus 0 into 0 cube. Since the value of x and y is 0 here, so our answer is 0. Now, for the b part, we will replace x with minus 1 and y with 1. So when we replace x with minus 1 and y with 1, we have minus one square as on the right hand side of equality sign. I have x square means minus one square plus 
x into y cube means we will replace x with minus 1. So I have minus 1 into 1 cube. Making a simplification, my answer is 0. Next, for the C part, we will replace x with 2 and y with 3. So on the right hand side, we have 2 square plus 2 into 3 cube. Making a simplification, 2 square is 4 <clears throat> and 3 cube is 27. So our answer is 58. So this is the value of function at the given point. Here the point is a ordered pair. Now for the D part, I have f of minus 3 minus 2. So here I replace x with minus 3 and y with minus 2 in the given function. So after replacing, making the simplification, so our answer is 33. I hope you have understood this question, question number one. Now we can move on to question number two. In question number two, the function is given to us f of x, y is equal to sine of x, y. And we have to calculate value of function on these specific ordered pairs. So in first part, if we have to calculate f of 2, comma, pi by 6, then in this part, we will replace x with 2 and y with pi by 6. So on the right-hand side, I have sine of 2 multiplied by pi by 6. 2 and 6 will cancel out each other. So I have pi by 3 in, as an angle. So sine pi by 3 is equal to square root of t over 2. You can easily calculate it from your calculator that sine of pi over 3 is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Please note that whenever you are using pi as an angle, its value is 180 degree. So in order to calculate sine pi by 3, you will calculate sine of 180 over 3 from your calculators. Now, after this first part, we can move on the second part. For the second part, we will replace x with minus 3 and y with pi by 12. So I have in the given function, sine of minus 3 multiplied by pi by 12, making a simplification. I have sine of minus pi by 4, and you can calculate it from your calculators that it is equal to minus 1 by square root of 2. Now, after B part, we can move on to C part. In C part, we have replaced x with pi and y with 1 by 4. So I have sine of pi by 4, and the value of sine pi by 4 is 1 over square root of 2. That is our answer. And for the D part, we will replace x with minus pi by 2 and y with 7. So you have sine of 7 pi by 2. And you can calculate this value from your calculators, which is equal to minus 1. I hope you have understand this question number 2. Now, this is the question number 3. In this question, we have a function of three variables because a multivariable function may have more than one independent variable and there is no limit how many independent variable you can have. You may have one, two, three, so on up to n variables. We will discuss this thing in more detail in the next lecture of 14.1. So here, for the instance, the given function is f of x, y, z is equal to x minus y over y square plus z square. So in this function, when we correspond this triplet with the corresponding values, so the, for the first part, I will replace x with 3, y with minus 1, and z with 2. So the first part, we have to calculate f of 3 minus 1, 2. I have replaced x with 3, y with minus 1, minus 1 here, and z with 2. So after replacement, after substituting the values, we can make the simplification and our answer is 4 over 5. So now we can move on the B part. For the B part, we will replace x with 1, y with 1 by 2, and z with minus 1 by 4 in this function. So look over here, I have replaced x with 1, y with 1 by 2, 
y is replaced with 1 by 2 and z is replaced with minus 1 by 4. After this, making the simplification, in the numerator I have 1 by 2 and in the denominator I have 1 by 4 plus 1 by 16. So you can write it as 1 by 2 whole divided by, by taking the LCM in the denominator 4 plus 1 over 16. Now, 4 plus 1 over 16 is 5 over 16. You can invert it. So I have 1 by 2 into 16 over 5. Making the simplification, answer is 8 over 5. So this is the answer of our B part. After this, we can move on C part. For the C part, I replace x with 0, y with minus 1 by 3, and z with 0 in this given function. So here is the replacement. Making the simplification, I have 1 by 3 over 1 by 9. And I can simplify it as 1 by 3 into 9 over 1. I have inverted this fraction in the denominator for the simplification purpose, and my answer is 3. Since I have less space here in the screen, so I have done D part over here. For the D part, I have replaced, I have to replace x with 2, y with 2, and z with 0. So when I replace x with 2, y with 2, 2 to here, and z with 100, I have 2 minus 2 in the numerator. 2 minus 2 is 0. And if you divide 0 with any number, your answer is 0. So in the D part, our answer is 0. Next, we can move on to question number 4. In question number 4, again, we have to calculate the value of given function at the particular triplets. So for this purpose, in order to do the first part, I will place x with 0, y with 0, and z with 0 on the right-hand side. So here I have 49 minus 0 square minus 0 square minus 0 square because the value of x, y, and z is 0. Making a simplification, answer is 7. Now we can move on B part. For the B part, I will place x with 2, y with minus 3, and z with 6. After replacement, making the simplification, so my answer is 0. Next, for the C part, we will replace x with minus 1, y with 2, and z with 3 in the given function to calculate its value at this particular triplet. Making the simplification, our answer is square root of 35. Next, we can move on D part. For the D part, we will replace x with 4 by square root of 2, y with 5 by square root of 2, and z with 6 by square root of 2. So here we have replaced the value of x, y, and z. Making the simplification, I have 49 minus 16 over 2. 4 squared is 16. Square root of 2 squared is 2. Minus 5 squared is 25. Square root of 2 whole square is 2. So I have 25 over 2 minus, in the same way, I have 36 over 2. When we combine these three fractions, I have minus 77 over 2. And then after simplification, my answer is 21 over 2 square root. So here we have completed question number 1 to 4 of exercise 14.1 from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. And it is the basic introduction of multivariable function. What is a multivariable function? In this lecture, we have learned what is a multivariable function and how we can evaluate the value of function at some given ordered pair or triplet. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have understood this lecture. Please subscribe to my channel and recommend this channel to your fellows. Allah Hafiz.